Hey everyone, I'm Akshay Ram and today I'm going to talk about nearly optimal robust secret sharing against rushing adversaries. This is based on joint work with Fasin Manurangsi and Prashant Nalini Vasudevan. Let me start this talk by recalling the notion of threshold secret sharing that was introduced in the seminal works of Shamir and Blackie in the late 1970s. In this setting, there is a dealer who has a secret message S that is n bits long. The dealer splits this secret into n shares SH1 up to SHN with some threshold parameter D. He then sends the IH share SHI to party PI. We want a threshold secret sharing to satisfy the following two properties. The first property, which is called the correctness property, requires that any group of more than T parties can come together, use their shares to reconstruct the secret S. The second property, which is the secrecy property, requires that the shares corresponding to any group of T parties reveal no information about the underlying secret. Threshold secret sharing is a fundamental cryptographic primitive with numerous applications. Some of these applications include constructing secure multi-party computation protocols, designing threshold cryptographic primitives, constructing leakage resilient circuit compilers, and so on. However, the basic version that I defined in the previous slide provides security only against passive adversaries. In order to protect against the stronger malicious adversaries, uh, there have been many strengthenings of threshold secret sharing that have been proposed. Some of these strengthenings include robust secret sharing, verifiable secret sharing, and the more recent non-malleable secret sharing. The focus of this work is on robust secret sharing. Robust secret sharing was introduced by Rabin and Ben Orr in 1989. It's just like any other threshold secret sharing scheme satisfying both the correctness and the secrecy properties. In addition to these two properties, we require a third property, which is the robustness uh, property. Roughly speaking, this robustness property requires that any group of T corrupted parties who might deviate arbitrarily from the protocol cannot force an honest party to reconstruct to a wrong secret. To give more details about the robustness, let's consider the reconstruction phase of the protocol. In the reconstruction, the parties start with the shares that was handed over to them by the dealer. We consider an adversary that could corrupt up to T of these parties. The reconstruction could proceed in multiple rounds and in each round, a party could send a message to every other party. The honest parties will follow the protocol, whereas the adversarial parties might deviate arbitrarily from the protocol. At the end of the reconstruction, the robustness requirement states that all the honest parties output the secret S that was originally shared. Here, we might consider an adversary that can either be rushing or non-rushing. The stronger rushing adversarial model allows a corrupted party to wait for all the messages from honest parties before sending its own message in a particular round. For applications related to secure multi-party computation, it is extremely crucial that the secret sharing is robust against rushing adversaries. The more formal definition of robustness is as follows. A T out of N secret sharing scheme is said to be T comma N comma epsilon robust if for every malicious adversary A controlling up to T parties and for every secret S, the probability that there is an honest party that outputs something different from S while interacting with A in the reconstruction phase is upper bounded by this parameter epsilon. So one can think about epsilon as being the error parameter for the robustness. Given this definition of robustness, let me state a couple of observations. The first observation is that Shamir secret sharing is perfectly robust. That is epsilon is equal to zero when n is greater than or equal to 3t plus one. And this follows due to the error correcting properties of Reed-Solomon codes. 
on the other hand if an adversary is able to corrupt a majority of the parties in the other words if n is less than or equal to 2t then robustness is impossible to achieve so the interesting set of parameters is when n lies between 2t plus 1 and uh, between 3t plus 1 and the most challenging setting here is when n is equal to 2t plus 1 the work of rabin and benor also gave a construction of robust secret sharing when n is equal to 2t plus 1 with error parameter being true to the minus lambda the share size of their construction was m plus order n times lambda where m is the length of the secret when compared to the non robust variant there is an additive overhead of order n times lambda in their construction so a natural question to ask is whether this overhead is necessary a work by carpentry et al in 94 showed that for n being 2t plus 1 and error being 2 to the minus lambda any robust secret sharing scheme has to have a share size which is at least m plus omega of lambda a couple of points to note about this result is that perfect robustness is impossible to achieve in this regime and furthermore the share size of a robust secret sharing scheme is strictly larger than their non robust counterpart a long line of work followed and which has tried optimizing the share size of a robust secret sharing scheme to achieve this lower bound I would like to remark that there are many exciting works that consider the setting where t is equal to half minus delta times n, where delta is some arbitrarily small constant. However, in this setting, uh, the lower bound of Carpentry et al. does not hold, and in fact, one can obtain a construction of robust secret sharing with a constant over it. That is, the share size is m plus order of one. however the focus of this work is when n is equal to 2t plus 1 and in this regime the lower bound of carpentry et al holds so let me now uh, give you details of the prior work on the setting where n is equal to 2t plus 1 and the prior work can be summarized in this following table the work of kramer et al uh, in 2001 improved upon the rabin benor construction by giving a robust secret sharing scheme whose share size is m which is the length of the secret plus o prime of n plus lambda here o prime uh, hides poly logarithmic factors however the reconstruction complexity in their construction was exponential in the number of parties and it was only proved secure against non rushing adversaries a work by sevalos et al in 2012 gave a construction that had a similar share size as that of kramer et al but it had an efficient reconstruction procedure and was proven secure against the rushing adversaries in 2016 a work by bishop et al gave a construction which had a near optimal share size of m plus o prime of lambda and it also had an efficient reconstruction unfortunately it was proven secure against non rushing adversaries Last year, Fair and Yuan gave two constructions of robust secret sharing. The first construction had a share size of m plus o prime of n to the epsilon times lambda, where epsilon could be an arbitrarily small constant. The reconstruction in their uh, work was efficient and it was proven secure against the stronger rushing adversaries. they also gave another construction which had a near optimal share size with security against rushing adversary but uh, the reconstruction was slightly super polynomial so the open problem which was uh, which follows from this long line of work is to get a construction of robust secret sharing with a near optimal share size with an efficient reconstruction procedure and with security against rushing adversaries in this work we resolve this question in the positive by giving a robust secret sharing for the case where n is equal to 2t plus 1 with security against rushing adversaries and the share size of our construction is m plus order of lambda times log squared n plus log n times log n here m is the length of the secret lambda is the error parameter n is the number of parties 
An interesting point to note is that even when restricted to the non-rushing case, our share size is better than the prior best known work by Bishop et al. in 2016. Furthermore, our reconstruction is polynomial time and it only involves two rounds of communication. So our work completes this table by giving a construction with a near optimal share size with polynomial time reconstruction procedure and it's proven secure against the stronger rushing adversaries. I would like to uh, uh, remark that in a concurrent and an independent work, Fair and Yuan gave a construction of nearly optimal robust secret sharing against rushing adversaries. When compared to our construction, their share size is slightly larger and their reconstruction requires five rounds when compared to our two round reconstruction. And furthermore, the techniques used in both these works are completely different. In the rest of the talk, I would like to give you details of our construction and explain how we achieve a near optimal share size. But before we uh, move on to our construction, I would like to explain the Rabin Benor construction and uh, which serves as our uh, starting point. Okay, so let's take a look at the Rabin Benor construction. So the Rabin Benoit construction takes the secret S and first shares it uh, using Shamir secret sharing to get N shares SS1 up to SSN. Next, for every party and for every I in N, we choose a random MAC key and compute the tag on the ith Shamir share using this key. And the share of a party includes its Shamir share and the n pairs of key comma tags. So this uh, can easily be shown to be correct, but in order to prove security, uh, we need to be slightly careful. This is because the, the tag uh, could reveal information about the shares of the other parties, and it's not entirely clear on how we can prove the secrecy of this construction. To ensure privacy, we use what is called as a private tag scheme. That is uh, the property that this private tag scheme satisfies is that the key comma tag pair does not give any information about the underlying message. So if we use this private tag scheme, we can prove the secrecy property of this construction. So let's see how we prove robustness, but before that, let me explain the reconstruction procedure. So in the Rabin Benoit construction, uh, reconstruction just involves a single round of communication. So in this round, each party broadcasts its Shamir share to every other party. Note that the parties do not broadcast the key command tag pairs and these are private and known only to this party. So we now consider an adversary who can corrupt up to T parties and since we consider a malicious adversary, the broadcasted share of the corrupted parties could be different from the share that was given to them by the dealer. Once a party, uh, let's call it as PI, receives all the broadcasted shares, it just checks if the tag is valid. Note that it follows from the, uh, the security property of the tag scheme that if an adversarial party has modified the Shamir share, then the verification of the tag scheme fails with overwhelming probability. So what a party does is that it just collects the shares for which the verification passes and does a Shamir reconstruction to recover the original secret message. Unfortunately, the main drawback of this construction is that the size of each share is m plus order n times lambda, and which is very far from being optimal. So let us now take a look at our construction and let's see how we can improve the share size. The first step in our construction is exactly same as the Rabin Penor construction. That is, we take this secret and share it into n shares SS1 to SSN using Shamir secret share. The second step is where we differ from the Rabin Benoit construction. Specifically, 
instead of choosing a key and computing the tag for every i and n what we do is that for every party we choose a random subset of the set 1 to n uh, with size order log n and we call this subset as the watch list of this party for every i in the watch list we choose a random mac key and compute the tag on the ith shami share using this key and the share for the a party includes its shami share and the key comma tag pairs corresponding to every element of its watch list note that since the size of each party's watch list is order log n the overhead that we achieve in this construction is order lambda times log n the idea of using watch list uh, of small size to authenticate the shares goes back to the work of bishop et al and is called as the local authentication paradigm specifically instead of authenticating every share we choose a local random subset and authenticate the shares corresponding to this subset But given this locally uh, computed shares, the reconstruction procedure is no no longer as straightforward as the previous Rabin Penor construction. So let's take a look at our reconstruction procedure. So as I had mentioned before, our reconstruction involves two rounds of communication, and let's take a look at the first round. In the first round, the parties just broadcast the shami share to every other party. as before we consider an adversary that could corrupt up to t parties and uh, since we consider a malicious adversary the broadcasted share could be different from the share that was handed over to them by the dealer unlike the rabin benor construction a honest party cannot check if every received share was modified or not because it does not have enough key comma tag pairs but what it can do is to check the uh, the the received shares for those corresponding to its watch list so that is what the par honest party does so an honest party pi uh, for every element j in its watch list it checks if the the j received share was uh, correct that is it checks whether the tag is valid or not if the tag is valid it labels the party j as being good otherwise it labels the party j as being bad in the second round uh each party just broadcast the set of labels for uh, corresponding to parties in its own watches so this is the second round of communication now at the end of the second round every party has the labeled watch list of every other party so let me make a couple of quick observations the first observation is that an honest party always labels an other honest party in its watch list as being good and this just follows from the correctness of the tag scheme on the other hand if an honest party has a corrupted party in its watch list and if this corrupted party has modified the share then with overwhelming probability it labels that corrupted party as being bad and this just follows from the security property of the tag scheme. on the other hand a corrupted party might choose an arbitrary label it could label an other corrupted party as being good on the other hand it can also label an honest party as being bad furthermore since we allow the adversaries to be rushing the the labelings of the corrupted parties can depend on the labelings of the honest party so given these two observations let's consider the graph that is restricted to the set of bad edges that is we remove all the edges that are la uh, labeled as good and we just include the labels that are uh, that uh, that are uh, we just include the edges that are labeled as being bad so in this restricted graph one can easily observe that the set of honest parties will form an independent set this is because every honest party will label another honest party as being good and it's not too hard to uh, show that uh, the maximum independent set on this restricted graph contains a large number of honest parties and contains only a few adversarial parties 
So this just follows from the fact that the edges from the honest parties are chosen uh, uniformly at random. So this gives a very natural approach to uh, reconstruct the original secret. Just find the maximum independent set on this restricted graph and do a reed solomon decoding on the shares corresponding to this independent set. Since this independent set is guaranteed to contain a large number of honest parties and only a few number of adversarial parties, the reed solomon error correcting properties ensure that the reconstructed secret is same as the original secret. Okay, so this is the main idea. But unfortunately, in order to make this idea work, you need to find the maximum independent set on this graph in polynomial time. But recall that uh, it's a classic result that finding the maximum independent set is NP hard on worst case graphs. But what goes in favor for us is that this graph that is generated is not worst case. And in fact, there are some random edges. Specifically, the edges from the honest parties are chosen uniformly at random. In spite of this favorable point, we do not know how to find the maximum independent set in this uh, graph in polynomial time. But what we do know is that we can find a set S such that the set S has a large intersection with the set of honest parties and has a small intersection with the set of corrupted parties. Once we find the set S, we can, like before, do a read solomon decoding to recover the actual secret. And one of the main contributions in our work is to find, uh, is to give a polynomial time algorithm for finding the set S. And we call this uh, algorithm as the vertex identification algorithm. Unfortunately, uh, uh, I wouldn't have time to go into the details of this uh, vertex identification algorithm and I would encourage you to look into our paper. So this brings, a, this brings me to the last slide. So in this work, we gave a construction of a robust secret sharing with an efficient reconstruction procedure for the case where n is equal to 2t plus 1, and our construction had security against rushing adversaries and had a near optimal share sense. Some of the open problems uh, that have been uh, it to uh, resolve are the following. So our share size has a polylogarithmic overhead over this factor lambda. So our share size is m plus o prime of lambda. And the question is, is this polylogarithmic overhead necessary? Another interesting open problem is to improve the concrete efficiency of a construction. So that's it. Uh, thank you for your attention. And you can find the full version of our paper on ETH.